Well, all right. I'd like to welcome you guys to the Mad Maker Show. Welcome back. Um, for those of you guys visiting us, folks out there for the first time, if you were surfing through YouTube and, and clicked, just see what the heck this is. Um, this is called the Mad Maker Show. And we interview people with uh, interesting talents and uh, creativity, anything from, oh, it could be CNC, uh, woodworking, metalworking, uh, electronics, 3D printing, uh, all sorts of stuff. And we call it the Mad Maker Show because we think, well, you know, I, I think personally, you tell me what, what, what you think, but people that are creative are kind of, they have their special sort of lunacy, right? Their, their own way of doing things. And they may not travel down the same path that the world typically, you know, at large travels down. So I kind of find those people interesting. Uh, I'd like to think I'm one of those people who probably am. Um, and so we interview them to gather inspiration, knowledge, and document, you know, and where they've been. And then possibly look back uh, in the future and review these or them, these shows be reviewed by people and say, oh, so that's where this guy was at that point in time. So that's the idea of the Mad Maker show. Um, couple of things I want to mention. I want to shout out. You do it um, on Instagram and YouTube. I'm going to paste the link here in a second in the chat. So um, I was uh, surfing Instagram and I came across you do it. And Doc Jared Hildebrandt had tagged me uh, in a post that you do it uh, had, had posted. And I think it was something to do with a, a was it a drawing or was it that table you do it he, he did a lit up 3d printed table that is so trippy you will not believe it in any event i'm shouting him out uh go check out his channel i'm going to leave those links at the end of my little speech here and after i toss it over to jp i'll drop that link guys check him out maker 3d printing really awesome uh another shout out that i'd like to to make his Patrick's workshop. I'll leave that link as well. Uh, and I'll do that. I'll link his his website. And if you guys don't know who he is, his jigs and his shop, his shop inventions and, and builds are incredible. So Patrick's workshop. I hope you're listening. Is Patrick's out there, JP? Uh, not that I can see at the moment. Okay, he's probably sleeping. In any event, I just got this shirt. So I wanna thank Miter Mike. Look how awesome. Miter Mike's shirt. Very cool. Isn't it Beedle, cool? Beedle. And now Miter Mike actually had to redo this shirt for me because he didn't have it in black and white. So I kind of forced his hand and he had to redo it black and white. And so I've got the first and probably, well, not the only, but I got the first, hopefully not the only Miter Mike. I got the first black and white. So thank you, Miter Mike. And, um, last bit of business here if you guys are interested you should check out the link i'm going to post as well at the end i have a song that's free uh that i'm posting on my website so you can go and download it check it out and there's a little bit of a story to it i just recorded it today the song is called mirrors gates and room right free download for you off of, off of my site i'll leave that link but JP came to me and um, today and left me a, a message and said, hey, dude, can you do something? Well, how was that, JP? I said you will do it or else. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, I, uh, I, 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 met, I put an entry in for the, the Makers Rock collaboration where we have to recreate a, uh, an album art cover. And I, I was kind of looking for a particular theme of music because I'm recreating uh, Mike Oldfield Tubular Bells and obviously, or Tubular Bells 2, sorry. And uh, Mike Oldfield wrote the theme tune to the music of The Exorcist. Uh, so I was kind of looking for that kind of music. Um, so I asked Eli if he had anything in his infantry. He said no, but he kind of said, give me a minute. And he went and worked on something and the rest is history. 
So he he said that to me, and I, I said, you know what? I haven't messed with recording a full song in a while. So I said, you know what? This is so different than what I do, because I usually do uh, rock and roll stuff, retro. Uh, but I said, you know what? I'm going to take some time and, and work on it. I actually got excited. I did it all on the synthesizer and uh, layered it. There's lots of layers to it, and it's about five minutes long. Uh, I got it done you know, in a couple of hours, uh, mixed it, the whole nine yards. I've been doing, I've been working with, you know, music, editing, mixing for decades. Um, so yeah, that, that, that's that bit. I'm pretty happy with it. And so check that out. JP. Uh, yeah. Well, first of all, I just want to mention I'm sitting here drinking coffee out of my man crafting mug, uh, at mancraftingtm.com. Uh, I want to thank uh, Robin Jacobson for giving me a uh, wood so I can make this nice little maple bell tea light holder today because I was bored. Um, a quick shout out to Dan the Maker Man for uh, sending me a sticker. And not only a sticker, but he made me a little uh, um, high 11 warrior sword out of a nail. So thank you very much to. Dan the Maker Man for that. Um, apart from that, my social medias. Um, right, my YouTube is JP Woodwork. My Twitter and Instagram is JP underscore Woodwork. I'm one fifth of the Makers International podcast, um, which you can find at makersinternationalpodcast.com. Um, my website, the podcast website, are both sponsored by Harnell Media. You can find that at harnellmedia.com. And I think that's about it. Yeah, that's about it. All right. So usually we thank have – well, thank you. I appreciate it. Um, lots of cool stuff. Uh, usually we have an actual banner and stuff, but today, for some reason, Google will not allow, so we must, we must adapt, right? So, mm. Yeah. So any, anyways, I'd like to welcome Brett McAfee to the show. Brett, welcome. Thank you, fellas. Appreciate you having me on. Dude, we're pretty excited to interview Ooh. you. Um, you've come on the scene. What, it's How long have, when's your first video? And usually we talk, you know, it's funny. We talk about making, although we make behind the scenes without the videoing, but for some reason there's a special mix you know between the video and the actual making so when did you start doing the videos with your current channel uh the i think the very first video i posted was in march of 2017 so not even a year ago not quite all right i, I want to get into your video style and, and a lot of these things that I've, I've noticed. Uh, but before we do that, we sort of want to do a little bit of placement and, and find out a little bit about you because, I mean, it, so the show, and, and this is more for the people because you've seen it, the, the folks out there have seen it, but for folks that are, are, are passing by for the first time, uh, we want to really get into uh, the setting of, of the human being, of, of the person, of the maker, and then start, you know, drawing from that well and, and see what inspires and, and what conflicts and all that, that cool stuff, right? In a very natural laid back setting. So first question has to be, um, and I usually do this Quentin Tarantino style. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll bounce back and forth. We might do that that way. But um, could you please give us uh, a little bit about, give us placement, uh, where you're from, uh, a little bit of history, family, uh, Good nuggets there for us to to bite on. Yeah, no worries. Um, so I'm originally from Kansas um, in a pretty small town, 30 or 40 miles outside of Kansas City. Um, I knew everybody I went to school with for 18 years. Um, I went to university for design and illustration, dual major, minor in film, minor in art history, because those were all things I was super interested in. Um, I got a job right afterwards working for a television show out in Las Vegas though. So I spent three years out in Las Vegas working for a television show, being a video journalist and producer, editor, 
on camera, doing goofy stuff on camera. Um, back to Kansas City after a lot of traveling. Um, worked for a letterpress and silkscreen shop uh, where I was hand mixing pigments and inks and things like that. Um, doing hand pulling screens and, and pressing. That was really, really fun. Uh, I worked for a fabrication shop after that, building everything you could possibly think of for clients. Um, then moved to New York to work in the city for a media company. I was an art director and marketing team member. Um, and then got really fed up with sitting in front of a computer for five years. <laughs> so I met uh, Jimmy Duresta. He was nice enough to let me down in the shop one day. And then I pretty much just imparted myself on his life until he let me, uh, you know, weasel my way into the shop. But I, I came up for years uh, when I was when I was younger. My one grandfather was a master carpenter. My other grandfather was a mechanic, car salesman, mechanic for forty or fifty years and ran his own business. So I always came up with a lot of blue collar guys that were makers, tinkers, um, guys that really knew a lot about a, a lot of things. Uh, so I got used to making and little hobby work and everything like that. And I've held onto it for years and years and years, but yeah, only, only until recently did I decide to meld my, my production past and, and my wanting to make and ability to make, if you want to call it that I made them ghost mush. All right. So there's, there's a lot, there, there's a lot there. Um, a lot of cool stuff actually. Um, but okay, so let's let me see if I could. Oh, rip back. it apart! Rip it apart! Yeah, that we'll we'll, tr we'll try. Well, no, not not rip it apart, but more like. <laughs> so, growing up, all right, um, Brett. Growing up, Kansas. What were you looking back now? Little signs of how you envisioned create inspiration like what were the things or figures or books or what were those things that started nudging you into this incredibly creative venture um so i i definitely spent a lot of time when i was really young i definitely just spent a lot of time in my parents basement drawing what i saw on tv and being by myself a lot because I didn't really care to go outside or be around people all the time. Um, I honestly, I used to always try and recreate, you know, I was, I was a bit apish in terms of, uh, I was really into cartoons and movies and things. So I would typically, you know, turn a movie on and then hit pause on the VCR because VCRs were still a thing and try and draw what I saw on, on, you know, the screen of the television. and. I I think my parents picked up at a really early age that I was mad. I don't know. I want to use your word. I I was different, you know. I wasn't typical cuz cuz my small town was a lot of farming, a lot of cornfields, a lot of wheat, a lot of people basically that were either just going to play high school sports or sports all year round and then go to university for a business degree or agriculture or something and then continue to live in the same town we all grew up in, which good, good for those people. I, I know some of them still, I keep in touch with them. Um, but, but I think from, from a really early age, especially looking back at it now, like none of that was going to be for me. And it's, it's like every step I took forward to go, I think I'm going to go to art school. And my parents went, are you sure about that? And I went, yeah. Okay, worked myself into scholarships, got into art school. Uh, I think I'm going to do illustration and draw pictures for the rest of my life. Uh, okay. And then I started getting into Ralph Steadman and, and these really kooky guys. The, Ralph Steadman is an amazing illustrator, but hung out with Hunter S. Thompson all the time. So then I'm like, okay, who's this Hunter S. Thompson guy? I didn't know enough about his life. And then I go, Hunter S. Thompson, he was connected to all these people. And then it just... It was a series of branches into all these creative kook balls that I seemed to understand their 
mindset a little bit more than the people I grew up with or the people that I was around. So it was a lot of leapfrogging from, you know, being bitten by uh, a Miyazaki movie. The first time I saw Spirited Away, you know, I was in university and uh, I remember going, this is way better than any of the Disney cartoons I remember growing up with. And I used to draw the hell out of those. So then I started drawing nothing but, you know, Spirited Away or, or trying to draw like Miyazaki to, to, again, try to ape the style to see, you know, what does it take to create that thing? Um, and the more I branched away from two-dimensional stuff, drawing and painting, the more I realized that I, I was able to do more with my hands or I could put my brain a little bit more around a physical object um, working through constructions and problem solving with a pen and paper, it's, it's easy enough to just throw the piece of paper away, but it's a lot different when you have a, you know, $200 piece of walnut that you're carving and you really don't want to ruin it. So how do you fix it? If you screwed up, I, I like the challenge. So, um, it, really it was a, it was a series of, of finding inspiration in somebody and then challenging myself to, to do what they do or do something similar to, to what they did. Uh, and it just, it branched insanely after that problem being that the money, you know, trying to support yourself, I got a lot more offers for graphic design or video production gigs than I ever did, you know, making furniture. So yeah, swayed it that seems, direction. It, it seems, you know, it's, it's interesting hearing that because um, I've found, you know, in, in, the previous shows, uh, a, a lot of with creative people, a lot of similar things. So, uh, you're an explorer. You're you're willing to to travel, uh, in in the head, outside. You're willing to explore and go down rabbit holes, right? Oh yeah, we're all mad here, Alice. <laughs> yeah. So now, and what you were saying, and small town Kansas, and and although, not the case. But kind of similar, Andy Berkey, um, his story uh, is like an odyssey. You could write a book. Uh, it's very interesting. I see some similarities there. Um, it, at least I do. Maybe the folks out there do or don't. I, I'm curious if, if they do. Um, do you know Andy Berkey? Absolutely. We're super good buddies. <laughs> we were just messing each other for two or three hours on Instagram the other day just for funsies. <laughs> Very awesome. Um, I think I think there's clearly a weird connection there where I think we get each other. So the dynamic worked really well. I got to meet him at the TP build last year. Nice. Yeah. So um, so we'll we'll go on to this last episode. We were interviewing Al's Hack Shack. Alex. Who's that? Who's that? He's a crazy uh, mad maker from somewhere where JP lives. I don't, I don't know. Blame me. <laughs> JP, how far how far uh, are you away from from Alex? Not far enough. <laughs> That's a good answer. That's a really good answer. <laughs> so, uh, last probably, probably about six hours, five six hours. Oh wow! Okay. Yeah, and you guys, you know what? Let's sidetrack a little bit here for a moment. Um, there's a thing happening, and we talked about this last time but just to market it a little bit more because a lot of cool people are going to be uh be there um brett are you going to be going to that maker thing over there absolutely um what's the lowdown on that maker central in birmingham uh the fourth and fifth of may i believe uh, fifth and sixth fifth and sixth um i'm heading over there because i have to i've now met too many people from across the pond and become really good friends with them digitally you know the kind of the kind of way that the community works or the maker community works is you just suddenly can make a ton of friends with like-minded folks and you never once actually physically see each other or talk to each other so i'm making a point even if i have to build a boat and row it over there i'll i'll make it because i'm i'm too excited to meet some of these weirdos surely yeah. you would have to build a ship of course, the captain <laughs> has to build the ship. So last time with with Al um, in the you were you were in the um, in, in the chat commenting that 
I mentioned, uh, and I hate to go here, but you did mention it, so we have to sort of like bookend that question. And it has to happen because, frankly, I mean, last time for, for you guys that weren't uh, there, we were talking about After Effects and all that. And uh, I don't even know why we even talked about After Effects at that time. Al used a bunch on his Matrix video. So he was learning some After Effects to right. to do the Matrix video. So my question, so we were mentioning, and then I, I, I sort of, you know, explained, oh, well, folks, there's this great site and uh, videocopilot.net. Uh, and um, you, you blurted out, you said, hey, I, I was, I, I know the guy. Yeah. Hit, hit us a little bit about, about that. So I, when I was in design school, um, we had one year, this was another one of those weird moments, you know, where uh, one of the younger professors came in and did an intro to motion graphics class. It was the very first time our university had offered an After Effects course because it was still relatively new to consumers or students. Um, and so I took that class and absolutely got the bug bite because it was everything I knew about drawing and graphic design except for that I loved movies and moving pictures. So I got to make those things move. And I immediately started making like, short films as quick as I could. You know, they're all garbage, but it was fun. Um, and I was Googling, you know, After Effects tutorials and stuff and came upon Video Copilot way back, way early on when he was doing like screen replacements, you know, like episode two or three of his tutorials. And I was right there. I was right there during that time with my little go. After Effects in my, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, I had my little white Mac laptop that actually I burned it out because I was trying to render something in After Effects senior year and I burned the, <laughs> I burned the motherboard because it got too hot. Um I was emailing Andrew pretty regularly because I didn't I guess I didn't understand how the internet worked at that point and I just thought he was an extremely accessible human. And I don't know what I said correctly, but he uh he contacted me back and was, you know, saying thanks for watching. And did I have anything that uh, I thought he missed or he could touch on a little bit better? And so we ended up having a few conversations over a year or two, um, and and becoming relatively friendly as much as you can with somebody who's effectively an educator and somebody emailing them on the other end. It was like having a professor, you know, to a certain degree. And then uh, when I worked for the media company in New York City. I was an art director, but I also did a lot of consulting for our After Effects side of things and did a lot of motion graphics for the marketing department. And then Andrew and I ended up, uh, we needed to have some contact with each other. We went to a lot of the same events, uh, Adobe events or, or NAB out in Las Vegas. And, you know, I used to live in Las Vegas, so it was all a really good circular me going back to Vegas, I knew Vegas. I also knew a few of the people and Andrew and I, you know, he was busy all day long and is completely swarmed by people, but he always made it a point to at least have a little chat with me. And he's a really good guy, but he is insanely busy. Yeah. Um, the, okay. So I'll just say this thing and I'm glad you, thank you for, for sharing that because frankly, I'm a huge fan of Andrew Kramer. Okay, although I don't work with After Effects as much as I used to, and frankly, I never I I did it for music videos and stuff, right? Although I did use it, I did two documentaries, one on the three, one on the Everglades, uh, and two on ATV drag racing, right? So you use, but very basic things for those uh, uh, document. You can't overdo it. But anyways, I'm glad you you touched upon that. Um, and I was going to ask you another question about that, but I totally blanked out because I, I drifted and I can blame it on we're mad and it's perfectly fine. Yeah. Um, I can quickly uh, think you're saying since we're on the subject of Al. He actually yeah. forgot something last week. You're actually on a podcast with Al, aren't you? Yes, I am. And he totally yeah. forgot that. Me, yeah. uh, myself, Al, and Steve from Moonshine Metalworks uh, do Fools with Tools every week. Which is yeah. quite a bit of fun. Yeah, it's a brilliant, brilliant podcast. Definitely go so, and check it out. So let's touch upon your let, let's touch upon your videos. And now we have a good idea with all these different um, interests and 
and skills, you know, from drawing to, but touch upon a little bit about putting that all together. I mean, your videos, um, it's so cool because you draw from popular culture, just like um, Al does different, but, but it's, it's the same idea. We, we accept these um, memorable things from popular culture and we inject it into our work. Is it natural? Is it conscious? What's going on? Uh, I, I, it, I would have to say it's natural mostly because, uh, it's, it's how I am every day. The, the only funny thing is I can't really do it in the shop, uh, because Jimmy has no idea what I'm talking about most of the time. If I make a movie reference or like a video game reference, but one of the, one of the shop bot guys that's in there right now is an old nerd and he took out his cell phone yesterday and he had the Triforce on the background. And I go, do you have a Zelda back? He's like 50. And I was like, do you have a Zelda background? And he goes, shh. And I was like, no, we need to talk. And then it was a nice bit of nerddom there. But that's that's how my everyday goes. It's like nerds nerds find each other. Or when we find each other, it's, it's like a comfort zone, right? And I, I legitimately, for years and years and years, this is the first time in in my life, I could say, that I feel legitimately comfortable with a large group of people or at least a large amount of acquaintances that I've met through the maker community. But my, my daily conversations with my closest friends are 90% movie lines or movie references and 10% genuine conversation. <laughs> Just because it's always fun to kind of like, oh, well, remember when this guy said it really well in this one movie? I'll just say that line from that movie. Um. So, yeah, my brain is all over the place constantly. I had a guy in my comment section one time go, how do you come up with your ideas? <laughs> you don't even want to know how crazy my brain is. Now, now um, the uh, the actual bills that, that you make, you do a, a little bit of everything. I mean, so there's a lot that we don't know yet, right? Absolutely. There's, yeah, I, I my my work history has has been varied to say the least. Um, and I've jumped around all over the place, but I'm also a sponge. I, I love learning. Um, and now the YouTube channel becomes a space where I, I would love to teach somebody how to do some blacksmithing or how to do, if they want to come to me for that. I'm not a tutorial channel as much as it's come here to think outside the box or come here to, to be entertained and learn at the same time. You know, Somebody told me I couldn't forge brass, and I said, you know, screw off. I'm going to try and do it anyways, and I did. I made those brass knuckles and the keychain. It just took an insane amount of patience and stuff. So, yeah, you could watch a video like that and go, I didn't know you could forge brass. You can. It's not It's not recommended, but you can. Um, so I have a tendency to I, – I think people learn better when they're entertained, right? There was an old marketing term called edutainment. It was like way overused for years and years. There's a certain degree of truth to it. It's just that those guys tried to like factory produce it and go, we know exactly how many laughs and how much information to shove into a piece at the same time. It's disgusting. Yeah. I, I, so I, I, I like I to let it flow. I like to let it flow a little bit more naturally now. So if I'm in the middle of a build, think of a movie line or think of a reference, I'll go, Oh, screw it. I'm just going to show where people where my brain went. Maybe they'll have the same reaction. So I'm in the middle of working on something, make a movie reference, and then somebody in the comments section will go, oh, my God, I totally thought of that same thing when you were doing it. And you go, yeah, then we're on the same That's wavelength. Awesome. That's awesome, dude. That's exactly it. You know, I mean, a lot of people will, will, will push back on what you just said because they – so, like, I learn like that, right? Um, but there's people that are so – like, um, and it's not a bad or good thing. It's more like it is what it is. Some people are like straight text, you know, give me the information. I shall learn and consume. Mm -hmm. I shall, you know, and, and, and then there's other people that, that they want it to be an organic thing, you know, touch, feel sensory and, and, and all that. Uh, but I'm totally people that thou shall only, only troll. <laughs> um, go ahead. And if there's any questions out there, let, let's, let's do that. Uh, yeah, we, we've got a couple. Uh, a lot of people were actually interested in the the, the, the wall art behind you. Um, I painted that. So, yeah, they, that's basically what they were asking. Did you do it yourself? And yeah, 
That's my. So, this is my Audrey because I love Audrey Hepburn. Audrey Hepburn, yeah. This is my Betty Page. And then this is, I actually kind of liked how it looked half finished, but this is Twiggy. She was a, she was a model in the 60s, 60s, 70s, I think. So yeah, I painted these because yeah. I like making stuff. But that, those are like eight years old. Nice. Audrey, nice. Audrey's been with me since Vegas, and that was 2010. Very nice. Um, St Sterling, when the, the, the show first started, he went, um, Brett, and then in brackets went, I pitch girly boys. <laughs> <laughs> um, Perfect. Bale, Bales has actually got a question for Scully. <laughs> he says, does Brett talk in his sleep? And if so, what does he say? Uh, I'm going to have to vouch for Scully because he's still traveling through the Dimension 13, but I... He he watches over the shop. He has no idea what I do when I sleep, and it's better that way. There we go. That's uh, that, that's it for the time being. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so, but it, isn't it interesting? Like when you put something out there. I mean, how do you feel about this? You put something out there, um, and the the responses that you get and reactions and those moments in your video that people, you know, find pleasing and and attach them so like scully and all that um that was just a total natural thing you didn't think it a lot of people tell me behind the scenes a lot of people since i discovered your channel like a month ago <laughs> um that oh and that scully and like i saw the video that was the first video that or maybe it was the first video, um and like scully became a thing yep so um, you are now forever i just want to say forever Forever and ever, Scully will be right by your side, no matter what you do. A hundred percent. I mean, I'm trying, to, I'm trying to figure out if he's going to be Good back in bringing, time to go to Maker Central. Good luck bringing me through customs. <laughs> I'm, I almost, you know what? I almost want to take a GoPro and film it if I do it. Just to, <laughs> like I'll blur out their face or whatever. It's like, I want to bring this through customs and get a reaction from somebody to go, what are you bringing a skull for? Yeah. It goes everywhere with me. Um, well, go ahead. Go ahead and answer that. I'm sorry. Well, it's, yeah, again, it was one of those moments where I just, like, I've always been into pirates and nautical stuff. You know, th think about it like this. I I have always had a creative approach or, or, sorry, I developed a little bit more of a creative approach after university, which was try and get yourself back to your your childlike mindset. And not not necessarily speaking of like the playful, naive way, but more just you had no restrictions when you were younger. When you were a kid before the world got down on you and everything kind of, you know, got heavy and responsibility driven and you started learning the right ways to do everything. Before all that, you just made pictures or drew on your walls or whatever the heck you did, made mac macaroni sculptures with absolutely no regard to any kind of rules. Other than, you know, maybe put some glue on some things and you knew it stuck together. But with with the whole Scully thing came up because I, I like it, the way my head works is just what's going to make this more fun for me? Or what are the weird thoughts that I have in my head? I'm like, what if someone was watching me, you know, from the other side of the shop and questioning everything that I did? Or what if there was actually a version of, of the troll the internet troll or the comment troll that would stand over your shoulder the whole time you were building and just go, hey, well, why are you doing it like that? Well, because I feel like it. And even though Scully's now my that's first a perfect, mate, That's the perfect answer. I'll tell you right now. Okay. Well, because I feel like it. That's good. <laughs> that, that, that childlike approach to everything is like, there's no rules. There's absolutely no, like all those rules, especially on your YouTube channel or your social media or whatever are completely self imparted. Like you have, yeah, there are no rules other than maybe don't be a, you know, butthead on social or use terrible words or, you know, be misogynistic or sexist. But beyond that, try and be a decent person and have an open mind about stuff. So the Scully thing ended up just being another idea that popped in my head because because I like nautical stuff and I wanted to be a pirate when I was little. And so I want to be a pirate now. Let's do it. So you're totally down. I want to be clear with this. 
experimenting, journeying yeah. and experimenting, right? That's Constantly. that's you know that's a, that's a a, a, a a like a backstab to a man crafting out there because he's always saying Eloy, you're always experimenting. Stop experimenting, Eloy. I'm like, dude, you have to start setting up booty taps. Well, so, I don't want to. I don't want to. You know, I don't want to ruffle. No, we're buddies. We're but we're buddies. We're buddies. Yeah. It's like a jokey, jokey joke type thing. But go ahead, hit yeah. us with it. Hit us. Uh, to uh, to to experiment or not to. Obviously, your answer is a hundred and ten percent. Experiment because you well, just laid it out, and I was just wanting to drive that stake, like that that the call into the into that vampire just a little yeah. bit more. Oh, you hear that man crafting out there? There you go. <laughs> I'll I'll say this. I'll say this uh, in in defense of of that point. I some of my favorite people and and most idolized people that I've got the pleasure of meeting in my life have been the kind of people that uh, wear the never stop learning patch on their sleeve, you know. And my ninety three year old grandma is she just scanned her first image and then used Photoshop for the first time like a week ago. And she sent me a picture of it because she knew I did that kind of thing. And that is awe inspiring. It, it is a truth. very, very small step for people our age or younger, but for somebody 94 who lived through the great depression or was like right after the great depression to now be using Photoshop. And she's, I don't know. I, I will never stop learning because I don't like, what it really comes down to is I don't like being told that the way things are, the way things are going to be for the rest of my life. That's yeah. never, that's never going to be a brick wall that I won't try and punch it, it through. Closes, it closes possibilities up. Don't it? Yeah. It, it, it totally, it totally like cones you in. And then all of a sudden, you know, Oh, well now I know what I'm going to be doing forever. That's not good. Yep. It's, it's somebody Look, if if things were as good as they're going to get or the right way forever, then the internet would have never happened. Maker movement would have never happened. We wouldn't have cell phones in our pockets that do as much as our computers do. None of that stuff. You know, it's a, it's a way more broad, broad terminology for things or, or way of putting things. But it's... It's ridiculous to think that you can't expand upon something. I, I love talking to guys that use hand tools. Because yeah. I love using hand tools and doing woodworking and stuff like that. But my favorite thing is to go in and do something wrong and then have them explain to me exactly why. Because two outcomes happen from that interaction, which is one, I get to know a little bit more about who they are. Two, I get to know a little bit more about why they do things the way that they do. And then that could be the end of our interaction, but I will take that back to myself and go, they told me I could never hand handle a chisel like this. Right. Guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to do only chiseling like that for the next six months and see what I can come up with. Because maybe <laughs> I find out something completely new by doing it. I love it because because mm. it's like you drove the stake even further in. By the way, Chad is is kidding. He lightly kids, but he's he he over does it. But in in any <laughs> in any event, I I get a, a lot of openness from you. You know of possibilities. So you're not a, a person that's boxed in. It, it, at least that's the the perception here that you're you're open to different a don't avenues. Put, don't put me in a box. Is like yeah, that should be on my headstone. It's just like don't put me in a box because, you know, when I die, I'm in a box. Anyway, whatever. I make and, jokes. And and also, well, no, that's actually true. Um, unless there's a big explosion. Um, and then there is no box to be had. Uh, you're, that's you're okay. Just, we're one. We're one with the ether at that point. We're all yeah. better off for it. But, but so let me ask you this, and and also I get the notion because I am this way, and I think you are too. But we'll find out right now. Um, and I want to touch upon video, video editing, uh, YouTube, and all that. Uh, although we have been, but I want to ask you this particular question. So, when you edit, well, number one, quickly, what software do you use to edit? I'm an Adobe guy, so okay. everything is Adobe. Premiere. Yep. Okay, so. All right. Well, good. I, I use Premiere too. So here's here's the question. There's a lot of videos, and I'm open to all sorts of styles of editing. And my personal style is what it is, right? So, but what do you have to say to people um, that aren't 
proficient in editing or feel that that you know what am i what could i do to better how i do it like there's people that'll set a camera and let it you know roll and it's like one position but you don't do that you don't sit there with a camera and then on top of that you manipulate the 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 color grading uh you manipulate a lot of things right i notice these things but you don't overdo it either so are there any your insights on why you choose to do the things to help them out there um, that might be curious about your style of editing? So, that's a long question. I'm sorry, dude. Oh, you're, you're fine. I can, I can wrap my head around it. Um, okay. A lot of it comes from, from having an, a super visual background, you know, or a lot of visual education. Um, so going through things between art history, film, classes, graphics, illustration, everything like that. You learn things about color theory, you learn things about composition, pacing, you know, what have you. And when I first started editing 15 years ago, when I first started making videos uh, for other people, it was a lot of uh, like I had been doing when I was younger. You're, you're basically imitating something else that's already been out there, right? When I was doing video journalism out in Vegas, it was, what is the pacing of that? Okay, we need to have a question on camera, B-roll, and then we need the answer to come in halfway through the B-roll or whatever. And a lot, and then you start to develop, okay, now I know how to do the very, very standardized cut and dry, shoot, B-roll, shoot, B-roll, shoot. And then you can start to play with it a little bit, right? Okay, well, what if I shoot, and then instead of drifting into the B-roll, what if I actually do a hard cut? to like a really exciting B-roll shot. Okay, well that actually worked really, really well. Okay, let's let's expand upon that a little bit more. And it's, I, I've tried to reference this before, I've never looked up who, who actually said it, but it's like, you gotta know the rules before you can break them, right? So with editing, it became a lot of watch, cut and dry, no pun intended, editing videos, how to edit. Go on YouTube, go how to edit in Premiere. They'll show you the generic tools. You can at least learn where to chop and everything like that. And then what you can start doing is, okay, you've learned the rules. Now, how do you break them? And how do you bend them? You know, like what what is it that's going to make you watch that video back and actually be engaged yourself? You shot the footage. You're in the footage, what have you. You're in control of the footage. If you can engage yourself, then then you're doing something right because that means you'll engage other people. So learn the rules, then break the hell out of them. My best way, my best way to learn how to edit. Do something completely wrong and then learn from it. Um, I'd like to thank Bobby Duke and Tracy, Tracy Keaton. Thank you so much, guys. I appreciate it very kindly. Um, I don't know what to say. Um, I feel so like I need to do something to demonetize you now. Well, no, don't, 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 don't do that. Um, so, so with what, what you, what you just said, you know, you, you go through the steps, but how do you, you don't, you don't, you don't mind doing a crazy cut or a crazy, like it, it's not, whereas a lot of people would, would, would be worried. See, this is what I'm, I'm, I'm getting at. And I, I don't want to get too into it, but yeah, I guess I will. Um, so, um, I like to, in my videos, and I'm just gonna throw this out there, not insult the viewer. And what I mean by not insult, of, and that's that could be a very abrasive thing, uh, you know, just out of the gates, but it's not. Uh, I am going to assume, which is nev never a good thing, but in this case it is, that they're following along just fine. So I'm okay with a boom, cut, uh, connect, like Quentin Tarantino, I hate to repeat it again and again. Um, Folks will follow, you know. So abrupt craziness has never been for me, uh, like a problem. What What do you think about that? Th that'll be the last part of this. I don't want to go down that road too much. That's I don't know fun. if it's yeah. It's fun. Um, it's yeah. Folks will follow. I I tend to look at it a little bit more of if you're a good storyteller, you can connect things that otherwise are disconnected, right? It is, it's, it's a directorial way of looking at things. Um, being obsessed with movies as I am for, I don't know how many years of my life now, but I just, I just eat film, right? I, I love it. 
And some of my favorite directors are are known to put contradictory things either in the same shot or next to each other in a cut, right? So beautiful, big, wide landscape, ultra tight macro inanimate object. And the audience is meant to look at those two things and and figure out why, because a director only shows you what he wants you, he or she wants you to see. Nothing is on screen for no reason. I know that's a double negative, but it means everything they show you means something, right? Or a good director at least will do that. So uh, when it comes to putting pieces together, I, I don't care if it's a hard cut or a soft fade or a nice little transition or whatever it is, because if you if you're good enough at telling the story, which I'm still working on, I'm still learning, you know, I, I hope people can follow, but uh, if, if I'm gonna show you my workbench and, and show you like a piece of wood and then hard cut to that piece of wood on a bandsaw, you don't need to see me walk 10 feet to go over to the bandsaw. I established wood and then the next shot is Different composition, the wood's not even the main focus of the shot, but suddenly I'm on a bandsaw. No one's going to look at it and go, oh, wait, how did he get, but how did the wood get over there? No, no, no. You know I walked over there. Also, color grading helps mesh shots. You know, that's why I do a lot of that. And if I want to do a stark con contrast like I did in the brass knuckles, I did controlled heat with a torch versus the, the forge. And if you... If anybody paid attention, when I'm doing all the forge work, 75% of the video is in the same color grade. And when I do the controlled heating, it's like all cool colors because I wanted to show a very different situation or something that I was trying. And then I hated it. So I went back to the forge. So there's this one little moment of like two minutes of my video where the color grading is completely different. And it's to set up an aside, a visual aside. So I did see one one of your videos because I did the same thing using After Effects. Actually, I didn't even need to use After Effects. I used Premiere, where I I try I was doing a video of how a bachelor lives at. I had I hate to say this, the kitchen was full. I had the video full of trash, and so I was picking up. And at the same time, there was the Atlanta show, and I did a transition, like looking like like bummed out, like hey, I'm forty, I'm I'm screwed, uh, and. <laughs> And it went from like color to black and white as I was telling the story. And you did something like that as you were. Is that the same one you're talking about where you're walking and it's gray, it's gray, it's black and white, and then it color blooms? Oh, that was the Frankenstein table. That was, that was because the whole setup for that was that I was making a young Frankenstein reference, shot the intro, used the, the extra scenes from young Frankenstein, which are all in black and white. And then you need, needed to transition into, you know, shop video or build video. Uh, so the color bloom happened to establish like we've gone out there of is. the narrative into the story. Yeah, those little touches. Um, we're going to pause for a second because um, there's some questions, but I do want to take a moment and, and thank you guys very much. Uh, Patrick, uh, for the donation. All of you guys. Um, Bobby Duke. Stop that, man. Thank you so much. Um, Chad. <laughs> And Wolfcraft, Temple Boy, um, go ahead and, and and the questions. Thank you guys very much. Okay, okay. Uh, yeah, we've got a few questions. Uh, Tracy Keaton said uh, or asked, uh, when did he find out he was going to be an artist? He looks so young. Ooh, I have a very young face. I'm I'm older than you think I am. <laughs> um, I I was drawing and painting when I was five or six years old. Uh, and in a really small, relatively conservative Midwest town, you get a weird big fish, small pond situation going on where everybody and their brother tells you, you need to get out and, you know, like, oh my God, you're too creative for this little, like, get out of here, go do something different, which I did absolutely as quick as I possibly could. Um, I, I don't, I actually don't ever feel comfortable taking a taking a title like artist or even saying like creative, I don't know, I, whatever, call it, call it like the weird Midwest modesty where you always apologize for everything. It's like being a Brit, you know? Oh, sorry for everything that I ever did to impart on your life. Um, no offense, JP. <laughs> oh, he'll take it. He'll take believe, it. Me, I'm not, I believe me, I'm not like that. It's, 
<laughs> it's weird. I, I think I'm just an open thinker or, or an open minded weirdo. Like I always just tout the weirdo flag. I like my weirdos. Even on Instagram, usually when I post, I'll just be like, What's up, weirdos? I'm just the I'm just a weird guy with hey, you're fun in the perfect, thoughts. You're in the perfect place, dude. That's actually what we search out and yeah. and gather and gather into oh, yeah. the, the the full we want weirdness and to learn <laughs> yeah i put yeah. that sticker put that sticker design up for laura and i sticker challenge and like my third design was weird rules weird rules of the world cuz it's very cool if i had it my way it's just going to be a bunch of weirdos being in charge of stuff not that you could make tons of political statements about that right now but what you i'm saying cool. is all of us cool weirdos get to be in charge of stuff well, there's good, there's cool weirdos, and then there's weirdo weirdos, like where they have like a, a hole dug in a cellar, and there's like a little puppy dog, and somebody scratching to try to get out. So there's that type of weird, um, right? That that throw back, throw back my dog. That oh no, please not the voice. I'll I'll have nightmares. <laughs> um, oh, the, oh, we uh, have weirdos in the England that be uh, build like um like Colin Furs. <laughs> yeah, build underground bunkers in their backyard. Yeah, that's pretty nutty. I love it. Um, <laughs> but JP, cool at the same time. Oh, yeah. JP, if you have, if if you have it, I, I'd like you to ask Brett some questions. But before I I, I yeah. drop the mic, you know, hand the mic over. Um, uh, I I just want to ask, as far as the um the sick the sticker is concerned, uh, a lot of people were also asking uh, behind the scenes. Um, it's funny how you didn't scan it once you drew it. You went in your sketchbook and you went, you know, to the design you wanted. Then you drew it up bigger, and um, you, the cool thing—you took a snapshot and then you mailed it to yourself, and then it was inside your program. You know, it's such a, a, a normal thing, thing to do. No scanning and whatnot. Um, yep. Where, where is that now? At, at what point is your sticker? Is it ready? Uh, I just, yeah, we're posting them like crazy because Laura Kampf and I are in a battle. So, uh. If if anybody listening to this or watching this wants to go and find it, we're we're posting everything on Instagram, and it's the first to ten, uh, first to ten designs. I'm up one right now. I'm I'm one ahead, and the agreement is at the end of it, whoever wins, whoever gets to ten first, the loser has to design a sticker for the other for the winner. Um, which how awesome would that be if Laura wants to design a sticker for me? That'd be rad. Um. But yeah, we're getting a bunch of other people joining and stuff. So you can go follow uh, Quicker Quicker Sticker or Sticker Paction, P-A-C-T-I-O-N. Um, and we 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 opened it up to the community. Like it's a battle between you know Laura and I for funsies, but we actually just told everybody and we're like, just, just if this motivates you to go and you know create a sticker for fun to join in on the crew. And now we've got you know a dozen or more people that are keeping up and and doing really fun designs. Nice. Yeah, and a few of them, a few of them did pirate references because they were like, "This one's for Skull and Spade." I'm like, <laughs> "I'm just creating a crew of pirates in the community, and it's gonna be great." Arr. JP, yeah, <laughs> so, so Steve the pirate. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, we have a pirate on our team? Yeah, Steve <laughs> the pirate. <laughs> Anybody that's not keeping up with dodgeball, I just. Yeah, that's, that's the one. Uh, okay, got a couple more. Uh, Master of None. He said, uh, oh, "Did my you boy. learn?" Oh, boy. Yeah, he said, "Did you learn more before you met Jimmy or after about making things?" Uh, fine tuning. Let's say um, Jim's been a really big help with, obviously, allowing me in the shop and allowing me to use a lot of tools. Um, the way things work for me is a lot of it's a lot of it's exposure to machines or tools or something like I'm the kind of person that will take something apart to figure out how it works. Um, Jim's been really good about feeding into that or, or, you know, at least being able to give the education out there for here's how you use a bandsaw like he does. Cause he's an absolute wizard. Right. And, you've never seen somebody use a bandsaw like him. So I'm getting to learn those kind of techniques and then translate them through my hands and same thing with welding and all that kind of stuff. So thought process with making and always having fun ideas to build stuff has been there for as long as I can remember mm -hmm. Using machines and execution and, and, you know, 
there's been some thoughts exchanged back and forth where we both have our own, you know, feelings about things, but we're, he recognizes, yeah. he recognizes, uh, my dynamic. I think the, the more I'm around, so it's, it's been going really well. He, he helps educate and I, I deliver. Very, Very cool. cool. Um, okay. A uh, question from Matt Huss from awesome wood things at all awesome fun things. He's got two channels. He says, any dream tools or equipment uh, on the to-do purchase list? Oh, man. There are more more of those than I would like to admit. Um, I honestly, I, I love working with wood, and it's great, but I have absolutely been infatuated with blacksmithing. So I want a a barrel forge or or like a four burner forge because i want to do swords and larger blades i want to do bigger stuff and right now we have a two burner and it's 16 inches deep or something so it's it's pretty impossible to do any large format metal smithing so you know we got the power hammer and the one thing we need to match it I want personally, I'm either going to build a barrel forge and buy all the materials myself or figure out if somebody makes them and I'll buy one. Yeah. But that's a, that's a dream tool because right now those don't look very cheap. Yeah. Uh, that's it for the time being, I think. Uh, yeah, that's it for the time being. So I want to tell a lie. Uh, Chip Build says, what's your favorite soda? Soda? Yeah. I don't think he means mini soda either. Eh, that is a really funny question. You know why? Because none. I haven't had soda in 15 years. Mm. Gave it up. Know. Gave it up. Couldn't do it anymore. Gave it up. Wow. Well, I I don't drink as much soda as I used to, but don't get too crazy on us, Brett. That's some insane I'll... stuff. That... Hello, can... Is there a straight jacket for this guy? <laughs> um, guys, come in. <laughs> no, I totally get it. The sugar, right? The the, the carom, What is it? The corn syrup? Yeah, whatever it is. I kind of just gave it up back in the day. And then once I became of legal age to drink, it just became coffee, water, and something brown liquor. But do you do you oh wait a second. So you 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 will drink a little bit of, of the liquor. Yeah? Absolutely. There's nothing okay. like a good way. I, I have that. I have that Ron Swanson, Nick Offerman tendency to just go. I don't want anyone to talk to me right now. I'd like a bottle of whiskey and a steak. That sounds good. <laughs> Give me all the bacon and eggs you have, and then maybe that, a side of Lagavulin. That knife. Yeah. That knife that you you made and you wrapped it in leather. How cool was that, man? Um, where did, where did that idea you, you have you seen that before I haven't seen that that done maybe I don't do much of the the surfing for knife projects and stuff but I really like that one I, I love the mixture of leather and and uh, the knife Which Tell us one a little bit didn't you in one of your videos you wrap uh, a knife with with leather was it leather and then you uh, cut uh... and then you cut the uh, the so the what you how you sewed it i think you did oh god the railroad spike knife that was a long time ago um <laughs> wow i'd almost forgotten about that yeah i took a you know trying to get more into the blacksmith thing and i was really enthusiastic but we were at the man at arms it's a youtube channel man at arms reforged they host a hammer in every year and so i went down to baltimore and uh I asked one of the guys that worked there that was on the YouTube channel, like, what I'm still getting used to this. What's something good? I want to make a knife while I'm here. There were a bunch of guys making cool stuff. And so he goes, Here's a railroad spike. It's nice. a really easy starter project. And he was right. Like it's it's not high carbon steel. It really won't hold an edge for too long if it was gonna be like a daily use thing. But you get to learn how to move the metal around, you know, some tempering, some generic uh you know, processes and stuff with smithing. And then I threw the leather on there to try and work on some handling and leathering. I'm, I was still getting better at those at the time. And now, now I feel a hell of a lot more comfortable where, you know, my, my 
I have an idea going through my head right now for a really intricate sword with leather and wood and steel. And I don't want to give too much away, but it, if I can knock it out, it'll be cool. Nice dude. Um, Oh, another thing I wanted to ask you, uh, you have a video where it's like a vlog and so it's, it's great that I, I, I remembered this right now because I, I just, you know, uh, it, it adds to, to, to the whole story. You, you have a video where it's a vlog and you're moving out. And since we're talking about what you're doing now, um, and you're moving out to go work at the shop where you work now, um, but you had to buy a truck and you had to do this and you had to do that yeah. and you had to do it in like three hours. I don't know. And <laughs> I was like, what now? Were you exaggerating or did no. you literally please tell it, me, lie to me and say, yes, it was true. It was, it's not lying. It was absolutely true. Wow, I, dude. the, the apartment building that I was moving out of had agreed to let my friend take my place. He was going to buy my furniture. He was, I wasn't going to have to move anything, or at least I was going to be able to take over my current apartment and then maybe make a trip or back trip or two back to pick up some of my stuff because my buddy wouldn't have cared. And then they just completely changed that idea and said, never mind, we're going to jack the rent up on that place. Your buddy can't afford it. Sorry. So I had to move everything out of my apartment, which meant I either needed to rent a car or I was going to need a vehicle up here anyways. And so I found a truck, packed all my stuff, had to completely clean my, like all that stuff that happened in that video. I joke around and do like the improbability drive, you know, and I go see Chris Zepp from Make Everything Shop. And that's, that's what I wanted to, I'm glad you, so, <laughs> so when you use that, so here's the, the craziness of it. I love the reference, right, to Hitchhiker's Guide. Um, I love the whole thing, the whole thing. But I, I love that, although you had that short time frame, you still had time to like you got, the, you got the, and yet yeah. you filmed it. You know, it's like insane. So well, why? Why that? Could, well, I know why because the the videos obviously you're you're doing all this and you have to you have to run through through wormholes to get to to finish your your duties. Go ahead. Yeah. So it was, I wasn't gonna be able to do a build, and I I kind of got down on myself because I was like, oh man, I'm I I really want to you know continue doing a build. I want to have the time to go up and make something. I had a few ideas in my head of stuff I wanted to create, but I needed to be in the shop. And so I was getting a little down on myself that I wasn't going to be able to make a fun video that week or, or at least dabble in the shop. And so I go, wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. I, I kind of like wrote everything out that I needed to do so that I made sure to complete all the tasks. And then I went, I wonder if it would be funny if people watch this to see how insane the next three days of my life are going to be. And I just went, screw it. I'm going to record it. And then again, within the process, I started to think about it. I go, Oh, wait a minute. I don't want to show myself driving through traffic and I'm sure as heck not going to, you know, try and use the camera while I'm driving. Um, so I'll just make it an improbability drive. And then I get to put some after effects in there and it's a reference to one of my favorite books. And so, Again, it just kind of happened cyclical. Okay, I'm going to do a move video. Well, what if I reference Hitchhiker's Guide? Okay, perfect. What if I do the graphics for it? Great. What if I do an animation for it? Great. What if I... And That's so I turned a moving video into a something maybe slightly more enjoyable for anybody that cared to watch me and just understand what was going on like yeah i think that's a great video and 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 folks should go check it out just so that you see so he's sitting in, in his apartment and he's talking about okay i've got this much time to do this, this, this and, that. and then the whole thing unfolds and it was great the effects and stuff so it's a fun uh quirky and yet it's actually happening to you. it's not like you're you know this is actually you transitioning out into into another yeah, situation i had i had three days Three days where everything completely stopped working the way that it was supposed to work. It was, it was rough. Are you anyway. still are you still using the same truck? Absolutely, she's my baby. So you could travel wherever you want with it. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's it's not ideal. It's a big work truck with an eight foot bed. So I don't take it everywhere. I, I throw on the drive every now and then if I want to make it to the shop. So this question now early. that so now that you you're. In, in this current situation shop, can you give us, you know, for the folks out there, what does a day of, of work out there, the craziness, 
look like give, give them a little bit of, of juicy <laughs> juice. Um, oh, just, I, I, dying to know. I will tell you what today and was. So I. I, I will tell you what today was because this is a pretty prime example. And now I don't have to think of anything because this is what today was. So up at six o'clock, um, immediately start sketching for my next sticker design. Get a text from Jimmy that says, hey, the guys from ShopBot are going to be there at nine. Great. Slam three cups of coffee, brush my teeth into the truck over to the shop by 830 so that I can get the heaters going, warm up the shop so that the guys show up and they're not cold. Do t-shirt orders, sticker orders, picking up kerosene and coffee for people, sweeping the floor, helping build the table out, uh, doing a run to USPS to drop off a round of shirts and stickers and stuff that I had done all that for. Make two more wax seals, uh, handwrite letters, come back, do my idea board for my next build video, finish my sketch, immediately leave uh, when we kind of hit like a stopping point, immediately leave to come home, shove food in my face, uh, finish sketch, post sketch, do all the Instagramming, socialing, social tagging and stuff, answer the 50 emails and social media things, which are all amazing. I'm not complaining. Um, but we don't have any service in the shop, so I have to do it when I get home. And then now I'm here. Like that was wow. There are no breaks. There's a lot of coffee in there, like yeah. a like a ton. Where like I don't I don't have it in the room with. Wait, do I have it in the room with me? No, I put it in the other. <laughs> Hold on, really quick. I know yeah. I'm stepping off camera. <laughs> hey, That's really that busy. He's already that busy. This just goes. This goes everywhere with me now. And I get laughed at constantly by all the gas station people that I'm like a regular at because I'll go in and fill like two you know, of these. You a know day. what you need, don't you? What's a that? Man crafting mug. Oh. You can fill one of these up and it stays hot for about six hours. You fill this up and it's still hot from yesterday. Whoa! Got, man crafting. Boom. That's because you yeah, get that you Stanley brand on there. <laughs> Well, he can add your 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 logo to it. By the way, oh, you by can, the way, you can have a lot at once. There you go. Yeah. By the by the way, um, so how did that come about? Your website, um, and the name and all that. Can can you tell us about that? Yeah. I mean, I'll I'll keep it kind of quick because there's yeah. not like a huge story to tell. I I have a really amazing friend. She's she became a really, really close friend uh, that I worked with in the city. She was my co-art director at, at my last job. And when we first met each other, uh, it was a little, I don't know, we, we almost started out butting heads because I was the current art director and they said that they wanted to hire another one to be more in control of like the website end of things rather than the media side end of things. I was like, oh, this lady's gonna come in and take my job it's gonna be terrible she walks in she's colombian she's got this crazy awesome afro tons of tattoos all over the place we talk for about 10 minutes and then agree that we're gonna be best friends we've never met each other before this we agree that we're gonna be best friends or we're gonna have a knife fight to figure out who's gonna be the main art director three years down the line i say that i'm probably gonna quit that job she gets bummed out about it and i go i would like some help branding myself because I want to step into my own thing. I'm going to, I'm going to attack this full on. And so I go, I'll trade you. I will do your branding. If you do my branding, cause she was working on hers and having a hard time with it. And she goes, I got it. Comes back to me like three or four days later. And what she did was I have, I got this tattoo six years ago. It's, it's a, I had some family things go down. It's a memorial tattoo in a way, but uh, she goes, that's it. That's all I can think of when I, every time I see you is that tattoo on your arm. And I'm like, oh, I have a few more, but that's cool. And then she came up with skull and spade and then she helped me with my branding and design and we talked through it. And then she goes, you need a website. I've never had a website before. Okay. Make a website. And then three weeks ago or four weeks ago, I did that 10 K video and then the red Smith was the one that came on and goes, I want a shirt with make your life on it. And I went, you know what? It's time. And so I made stickers and shirts and now 
Yeah, everything's a whirlwind, man. I feel like as I'm explaining this, I'm realizing that it's it's all really, really fast. <laughs> it is a whirlwind, huh? And what? So you have stickers and and shirts on your site. I have the links. Um, you guys, all the links are are there. So you could check out Brett. And um, so you have shirts, stickers. What else, What what other items now and in the future would you like to add to your your shop? I mean, where's your head? Obviously, you're super busy. What you just mentioned. Um, but where's your head on in, in respect to that, like of merch that you'd like to do or items? Like, what are you thinking? Uh, it's, it's, it's actually kind of tough to think about this shirt thing. It, it feels really weird to have my brand or, or my name attached to something that people want, like a physical item of it's weird. I don't, I don't. Again, it's, I, I feel like I spent enough years of my life dealing with people in like corporate environments or other jobs that I used to do where it was like, you never worked good enough or hard enough or your stuff wasn't good enough, you know, and you just kind of like a little oppressive. And so this world will out. beat you down, won't it? <laughs> yeah. And all you got to do this is world... kick it in the face and get back up. <laughs> right. Yeah. But even doing the shirts or the stickers, I'm like, who's gonna who's gonna wear a shirt with my logo on it? You know, like I'm not cool. Like, get out of here. And you know, it's amazing. I, I it's an amazing. Exact same. Sorry, go ahead. I thought the exact same. I thought I thought the exact same, and then I sold eleven. <laughs> and <laughs> Jackie that, sold eleven shirts. Yeah, I, I'm, I know, I'm wearing I, one. I, I, I know. I know. It didn't really. It doesn't really sound a lot, but I'm not. Again, I'm not the, the biggest YouTuber by any means. Yeah, well, I, it, it kind of meant the world. Yeah, it's 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 been really amazing. Like I, I hope it didn't sound like I was even complaining about uh, fulfilling no, no, all no. the orders or anything. It's no, 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 no. It was. It, it, it's actually you're you're as clear, at least to me, and I think to everybody out there, it's as clear. You've got the set amount of time. You're busting butt. Um, you've got things to take care of. You want to do this. You're running over here. How long? totally get it totally totally get it yeah but i've had i've had a a really amazing response and it's to get to get like kind of sappy for a moment it feels it feels weird in the most positive way that i think i've ever experienced before or at least like yeah. this moment like i am i am tired i sleep 3 or 4 hours a night typically that's that's like very very standard and Every now and then, I, you know, I'll wake up in the morning and I'm like, oh my God, I haven't, I haven't slept. I haven't done laundry in three weeks because I, I can't find the time to do it or whatever. Cause I'm, I'm constantly wanting more of an experience with the community or more experience on YouTube or more experience building things or whatever it is. So I, I kind of sacrifice a little bit of my own, call it sanity, but I, I don't get to see my friends as often as I'd like to because they all still live in the city. You know, I don't get to travel as often as I'd like to because money's insanely tight. And and it feels awesome to have the kind of support that I do being as small as I am. You know, like my channels, it was it was insane to hit 10,000. Like, I couldn't tell you how crazy I felt that day. I was just like, I don't know what to do with my life. And then I thought of train spotting like that. It just came to me. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to steal Jimmy's button and run out because I don't know what to do. And <laughs> like I, a handful of people bought shirts and stickers and stuff. And it's crazy. And one of the, I, I sent out, you know, I have a Patreon and it doesn't have a lot of people on it, but it, those that are there, it's, it's, I love this idea of quality over quantity and everything that I do, right? Like video production, creative works, uh, interactions with people, your friendships, your family, whatever it is. Like I would rather have 10 amazing friends than 50 acquaintances, or I would rather be in the yeah. maker community, busting my butt every single day to try and get something. If, if this is what continues and I get to meet, the kind of people that I've met here, even though I'm like broke and the happiest I've ever been, screw it. Yeah, I'll 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 do yeah. it. I'll do it until like my shirt says it says make it make till you break because it's like I will continue doing this like, until I can't do it anymore. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean this the 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 community. What's so cool about it is is meeting like minded people um, mm -hmm. that that just create things that I'm constantly jaw dropped 
with everything I see, you know, from people. And then you have to th think you have to do your, your, your thing. But and uh, what, what a great, you know, group of people. And, and, and there's a lot of makers, creative people out there. I, I love um, the things that you that you've done and what you're doing. Um, and I, I love the layers of of talent that you have from the design aspect to you know after effects to actually producing you know these pieces that you do um i can't wait to see what you come up with with that that sword i'm thinking i don't know maybe i'm wrong it's actually i'm gonna have to it's probably <laughs> it's probably either pirates or i hope it's lord of the rings stuff i don't know somewhere in between i, I don't know i'm not gonna put well, push on that I'll say this to you. I'm not taking place in the the nerd contest or whatever. So you're you, you're yeah. way off. No. Oh, because you said two yeah. things, and I said oh, I'm not taking place in one of them. Right round like that. <laughs> That'd be pretty cool. There you go. Um. So before JP, if there's any questions out there, yeah, um, there there's one more question that we've got. Okay. Uh, it comes from Katie Dotson. She goes, "Does Brett plan to do any Damascus knives?" Um, I am absolutely torn because I love pattern blades. I love how they look. I'm, I'm, like sitting on the bench, you know, watching watching some of these guys playing the game, which is that very strong battle between people that actually call it Damascus and the people that say that it's not real Damascus and the research and Wootsor and all that kind of stuff. I love the look of an old traditional, I'm talking hundreds of years old, right? Like Woots or produced in Jerusalem, Mesopotamian area. And it was a very specific way that they produced the blade, which is, it was made in Damascus. That's why it was called all these things. And so doing like a mild steel and a higher carbon steel and then acid etching it in my mind looks the part, maybe isn't the part personal thing. I'm not a professional blacksmith. I'm only, I'm only regurgitating the kind of stuff that I'm reading, but I want to do a master sword, but Damascus. Nice. So mm. full on Zelda nerd reference. I just need the power hammer to be working because I there's no way I'm going to be able to forge a double bevel at that size by hand. I'll I'll die in that process. You're coming over to make a central. You know he's over here with a power hammer, don't you? I do. I know. I know a guy or two. <laughs> Alex still. Well, yeah, that, I'm. I think I'm closer friends with Sam at this point. Sam and I have had more chance. Uh, yeah, Sam. Yeah, he's a good guy. Rather than I've had zero chance with Alec. Plus, I've got Steve Moonshine Metalworks. He's got. Ah, yeah. He's got all the goods as well. I've already told him he's a big Zelda nerd too. So I was like, "Do you want to buddy build on that?" And he goes, "Oh man, we should totally think about that." So. Yeah, yeah. I'm totally gonna scroll saw a Zelda link, uh, but from the '80s now. Oh yeah. It's got to be eight bit. Like, I mean, I better do it before you. <laughs> don't start a challenge that I'm not like. Come on, dude! It's like more oh, challenges, come on, Eloy. Come more on, Eloy. maker You're challenges. Eloy, Eloy, I cut himself on a scroll saw. <laughs> oh, we we solved that problem like last week or the week before. I don't even remember. I saw, um, I saw you even been taunting me by flicking the blade while the scroll saw was going. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wasn't doing that. I no, man. Um, we were anyways. different people then. We were different people. So, Brett, <laughs> let me ask you this, Brett. Did, did you enjoy it? Absolutely. This is a fantastic time. I, I super appreciate you guys having me on. I, I, you couldn't have lied to me a year ago and told me I was going to be doing something like this. This is this is really fantastic. I, I honestly feel like I found a, a crew of people. You know, they maker community is large and there it is varied and there are tons of great people within it but i'm carving out this weird little section of just ultimate weirdo nut jobs that we're going to be the cool kids at maker central i'm sorry you're yeah, not going to be there you know. well dude we'll you, you, next next week we we have um bernie solo Ooh, yeah work some solo we've been chatting oh, a lot recently yeah. that dude is legit um yeah he's awesome 
yeah, so that's going to be pretty trippy. I'm I'm very curious to find out his story and uh, his. Have you seen his videos, by the way? Yeah, They're, like oh, the, yeah. The, I don't know what his story is with the video editing and stuff, but I'm I'm I'm, I'm I don't know if he's got After Effects too or I don't know. But those shots are like amazing. So we're going to be interviewing Bernie Solo. Um, and and let me ask you this: uh, Will you come back and see us? Absolutely, in a heartbeat. Probably okay. just more nerd references and stuff next time, though, since we spent all yeah. all the me stuffs out of the way. So now we just get all the fun. Yeah. Well, um, dude, we listen. We appreciate it. Uh, it it was a, a great interview. Um, very enjoyable. I love the cultural references and just all that. And I learned a, a lot about you. And uh, just thank you very much, man. Absolutely. Thank you, guys. I really appreciate it. JP. Uh, I've not really got anything to say. All my uh, social media was at the start. So, yeah. Right on. So, uh, by the way, Brett, have you heard of Makers Media Network? I have not. Okay. Um, so, just for the folks out there and, and Brett, uh, so Makers Media Network, there's a website, makersmedianetwork.com. Uh, it's a group of makers like us, um, Chad from Man Crafting. Avi's Woodshop, Patrick's Workshop, uh, JP, we've got Miter Mike, we've got uh, Mark Lindsay, we've got, who else we got in there? Just a bunch of people. Um, yeah. Highland Boxes, mm -hmm. uh, Bear, Bear Woodworking. Becca. Becca. Uh, well, long list. Anyways, the, the, the story is, it's a collaboration of makers that help promote each other, support each other, uh, marketing wise and, and whatnot. So if you guys out there are, are interested, it's, it's, it's really, what do you offer the group and the, uh, and the group offers you, but it's all in goodwill and good spirit and, and promoting people's, uh, uh, YouTube making. So it's strictly a making group. So check that out, makersmedianetwork.com. Anyways, guys, thank you very much, Brett. Uh, I hope you get sleep tonight, dude. <laughs> I'm gonna try. I have a little bit more work to do after we're done with this. So, well, I'm I'm shooting to get to bed before one. If I can get to bed before one, that means five hours of sleep. All right, all right, guys. Have a good evening. I'll catch you next week, JP and I for works by solo. Thank you guys again. Mm -hmm. And thank you guys for, for the love.